Dear students, in previous sessions we have discussed simplifications of CFG. We have discussed four kind of simplification. That is the removal of variables that do not derive terminal string, removal of all the symbols that do not appear in any centennial form, removal of, removal of null productions and removal of unit productions. In today's session, we will discuss the normal forms of context-free grammar, normal forms of CFG. Uh, normal forms, uh, we have already heard uh, this term in uh, databases. In databases, we have uh, our databases uh, in first normal form, second normal form, etc. Uh, the purpose of these normal forms in the databases is to uh, make the operations of databases more efficient. Uh, almost similar kind of purposes will also be there uh, in, the uh, in the normal forms of the context-free grammar, that is CFG. Uh, we will have certain advantages if we put our CFG in normal forms. First of all, we will discuss what do we mean by the uh, normal forms of CFG. Uh, suppose we have a grammar G and this grammar G is a context-free grammar CFG. So when the productions in this grammar satisfy certain restrictions, then G, this grammar, is said to be in normal form. So being a grammar in the normal forms, we have to put certain restrictions over the productions of that particular grammar. We know that in our CFG, uh, each production on the left hand side has only one variable. And on the right hand side, it can have anything. Now, when we will put the restrictions over our productions, this simply means that on the right hand side, it should not be anything. It will be the only desired format which we want on the right hand side of each production. Okay? So, uh, such restrictions we will be putting uh, on the productions of our grammar. Okay? Uh, we will be basically discussing two kinds of uh, normal forms. First normal form is uh, called CNF. This is called Chomsky normal form. And the second normal form is called GNF. It is called Grivich normal form. So these two normal forms we will be discussing in the CFG. In today's session, we will be stressing over the Chomsky normal form that is the CNF. Now let us come on the Chomsky normal form. So a CFG is in CNF that is in Chomsky normal form. If every production is of the form either a to small a means a variable to a terminal and a to bc means variable to a set of two variables okay so only two variables may be present on the right hand side so on the right hand side if there exist only in every production if there exist either only a single terminal or the two variables if all the productions are of these two formats only then we call that our CFG is in Chomsky normal form. Okay. Uh, in some of the uh, gra grammars, uh, suppose the language represented by the grammars, null is the part of the language. Okay. So if null belongs to LG, then we will also include S to null in G. If null belongs to LG, we will also include S to null in G. So uh, means uh, S is the start symbol. So only start symbol to null, there may be the production. There, there will not be any other null production in the grammar. So only null production, if required, will be present as the start symbol to null. And if S to null is present, then S will not appear on right hand side of any production. So if S to null is present in the grammar to include null into the language, in such case, S will not appear on the right hand side of any production. So these restrictions should also be there. So, in this manner, we will define our CFG in Chomsky normal form, that is in CNF. Now, what is the advantage of this CNF? If you carefully look at the format of the productions, so the derivation tree, which will be for a CFG in CNF, will be of the form of a binary tree. So, it will be a binary tree. Why it will be a binary tree? Because whenever you start with a, sim uh, a start symbol, so a start symbol will be having production, either having only a single terminal or having two variables. So from one variable, you will derive two variables. So at each node, at each node, either it will be having two childs or a single child. 
okay and when it will be terminated by a terminal then there will be no child so at the most two childs will be for each node in the derivation tree corresponding to that cft so this is the advantage we know that uh, associated with binary tree we may derive many theorems we may find very interesting results okay so all those theorems all those results can also be applied over the derivation tree of a cfg which is in cnf so this is the advantage of having our cfg into the cnf in a normal cfg derivation tree may take any shape but if cfg is in cnf your derivation tree is bound to be a binary tree this is the advantage because of which we want our cfg in the cnf uh, now let us come on the conversion of cfg to cnf Uh, first we will take one example to informally show the process then we will be discussing its procedure formally okay so in our example suppose grammar g is given by these four variables capital s a b and capital c there are three terminals small a small b small c and a set of production p is given like this and s is the start symbol p is given as s2 capital a capital b capital c all three variables and then s2 suppose small a capital c so this is terminal this is variable a derives a small a b derives a small b capital c derives a small c so this is the grammar so when we convert first of all we will look at the productions because only restrictions we have to put over the productions okay so we will uh, we will move all the productions of p which are already in the required form to the p dash so suppose we are going to make a new set of production p dash uh, which will be corresponding to the grammar in cnf so all the productions so a to small a it is already in the required form because in cnf there are only two formats uh, allowed which are variable to a terminal and variable to a set of two variables okay so this is variable to terminal this is variable to terminal this is variable to terminal so all these three productions will directly be included here okay so a to small a b to a small b and capital c to a small c so these three productions are included now the productions s2 a b c it is not in the required format because it has all the variables but number of variable is more than 2 we should have only two variables here if we want this production to be in uh, chomsky normal form and similarly from s to small a capital c yes there are two symbols but both symbols should be in that case if there are two symbols both symbols should be in that case variable but here we have one terminal and one variable so these productions which are not in the format of cnf we will convert these to the format of cnf first of all we will consider s2 ac so we are considering s2 small a capital c how we can convert it if uh, suppose we remove this production and in place of this production we include the product uh, we include the productions of the form suppose uh, s2 b c so we have introduced a new variable d okay so s2 dc and then d derives suppose small so these two productions combined will have the same effect which s2 small a capital c is having because s from s will move to d c and d will ultimately derive small a so ultimately from s we are driving a small a capital c so it will be having the similar effect okay so we will remove this and we will add these two productions now come on this the second uh, production s2 capital a capital b capital c here the problem is more than two variables okay so let us assume we should remove this and we should include the productions of the form s2 a b c so a we are keeping here and then we are introducing a new variable e so s2 a e so a and e and e will ultimately derive b c so e we are driving b and c so s2 a e it is in the required form of the cnf e to b c is also in the required form of the cnf and suppose if we want to start from s so from s we can go for a e okay and then e will go for b c so ultimately from s we will be able to derive a b c 
so it will have so removing this production and including these two production will have the same effect so these will be the productions in the p dash now we can write the g dash so our g dash will be it is consisting of the variables a b c s d and e so s a b and c these were the already present variable and new introduced new introduced variables are b and e so these will be the variables and then small a small b and small c these will be the terminals okay and then p dash will be the set of productions and s will be the start symbol so this will be the our grammar g dash so we can say that it is the equivalent grammar of g because g and g dash uh, uh, will be representing the same language so it is the equivalent grammar but now the uh, all the productions in the p dash on the set of production follows the form which is required by cnf either variable to a terminal or variable to two variables so all productions are in the required format so in this manner we can convert our cfg into cnf so this is an informal process now we will be looking at how formally what, what is the formal process of converting a cfg into the cnf because it was a very simple case so we were able to uh, convert it directly but if uh, suppose there is a complex grammar there then we should follow the formal procedure now in the formal procedure of converting a cfg into cnf there are three steps so first step is removal null production removal of null production and unit productions means as a first step we should remove null production and unit productions why we need to remove null production because as per the definition of cnf uh, our productions cannot uh, cannot be the null productions only start simple to null is allowed just to include null into the language no other null production is allowed okay so that's why we have to perform the process of removing the null productions uh, then unit productions why the removal of unit production is required suppose there is a production of the form b to c okay we know that this production is not in the required form of cnf in the required form of cnf from a variable there should be a single terminal it is not a single terminal it is a single variable so you cannot convert the single variable into a single terminal okay and uh, similarly this single variable you cannot convert into a set of two variables you cannot convert c to something in the set of two variables like c d or a b like that okay so there is no way to convert unit productions into the productions of the form which is required by cnf so that's why removal of unit production is necessary so these two are the initial steps so removal of null production and removal of unit production is necessary in this step 2 we have to eliminate the terminals on right hand side as uh, per the format of cnf on the right hand side either there should be a single terminal or there should be only the two variables okay so whatsoever productions we are having on the right hand side if they cons they are consisting of terminals and variables both then from all those productions we will try to remove the terminals we will keep them variables only okay if there is a single terminal on right hand side then it is okay but in rest all other productions if terminals and variables are mixed then we will try to remove all the terminals from the right hand side we will convert those terminals into the variables okay so we define a new grammar g1 our original grammar is g g is equal to vn sigma p and s so we are defining a new grammar g1 where the set of variable is vn1 so the set of variable will change okay because we will be including certain variables into it as we have seen in our informal example okay sigma will remain same and the set of production will change some of the productions will be removed and some new productions will be included and s will be the start symbol so in this manner we will define g1 so only two things are changing here a set of variables and set of productions so now we'll look at how we will be forming this new set of variables and new set of productions so first step towards it is all the productions in p in the original production set all the productions in p of the form a to small a means variable to a terminal or 
of the form a to b c means variable two set of two variables are included in p one means all the productions which are already in the required format in p will be included in this new production set p one okay so we will initialize our p one like this then all the variables in v n the original set of variables are included in v n one so this we have to include because in our informal uh, example we have also seen that there was no variable reduced rather we have uh, included some more variables so all the variables which are present in the original set will also be represented in the new set so in this manner we have initialized both v n1 and p1 now we'll add uh, certain more variables and certain more productions to the set v n1 and p1 Uh, now after the first part of the second step uh, we have performed we have already included all the productions of the required format into the new grammar okay and uh, all the variables of the original grammar into the new grammar the only productions left in the original grammar were those uh, which were not in the required format of the cnf now we will consider these productions one by one okay so let us consider such a production suppose that production will be of the form a2 x1 x2 x3 and so on up till xk okay and uh, some of these xi's may be terminals and some of these xi's may be the variables okay so with some terminals on the right hand side so if xi some particular xi is a terminal suppose ai then what will do for it we will add a new variable suppose cai to the vn1 vn1 is our uh, new set of uh, variables so this already the original set variables are already included into it, it so not some new variable cai will include to it and then we will also include a production of the form cai to ai okay because for xi which was basically ai we have introduced a variable cai so at the place of ai we will be writing c of ai okay then we will write the production c of ai to ai uh, so that uh, we may convert uh, cai to ai wherever it is required so it will be included to p1 this will be more clear uh, with this example suppose our example is a2 small a capital b small d capital e and small a okay so there are certain terminals and certain variables okay so obviously this kind of production is not in the required format now what we are going to do we are going to remove the terminals from the right hand side of this particular production okay so what we are doing we will we are looking to it suppose this is a variable a so corresponding to this variable a uh, so, so this is the terminal a so corresponding to this terminal a we are going to create a new variable suppose we have created a new variable ca okay so we will be writing this production something like this a2 ca so this now the ca is a variable so this is a new variable which we have introduced so this new variable we will add to the vn1 so as we have included c of ai to the vn1 so this ca we will include to vn1 we have named it like ca so that we may understand yes this variable derives the terminal a okay so we have included ca to the vn1 and then we have introduced a production of the for ca to a into the set of productions okay so this we have done b because it is a variable so it will come as as it is no problem now it is d so in place of this d we will introduce a new variable suppose this variable name is cd okay so we have introduced a new variable cd into the vl1 and we have added the production cd to small d into the p1 okay so now at this place of this d we can write cd because this cd will ultimately derive d then this e is a variable so no problem we will write it as it is now this is this, this a is again a terminal now this is the same terminal which we are having here so rather than int introducing a new variable we will use the same variable which we have just introduced here okay suppose this is a separate uh, terminal suppose like c so we we, we would have a written or uh, we, we would have written a variable uh, introduced a variable cc to it and cc will derive small c okay but because it is the same terminal which we are already into for which a variable we have already introduced so we will use this so we will write ca 
and Ca will ultimately drive A. So in this manner, this production is removed and these three productions are added to P1. Okay. And now this Ca drives A, so ultimately it will come A. This B is as it is. This Cd will drive D, so D will come here. This E is as, as it is and this Ca will drive A. So this production will remove and these three productions we will add to the set of P1. And the newly introduced variable that is Ca and Cd, we will introduce these variables into the Vn1. So in this manner, we will remove terminals from the right hand side of each production. So whatsoever productions are left, we will remove terminals. So no production after doing this process, no production will be having terminal on its right hand side because uh, here we are having the terminals on the right hand side, but these are already in the required form of CNN. So they will be directly, in, they, they are directly be, to be included into the P1. So they are included in the P1, they are already in the form of form required by CNN. So now again, these kind of productions are there which are not in the form required by CNR. But the only problem here is these all are the variables. These all are the variables but we have to restrict their length. So only only two variables should be on the right hand side. So now what in the third step what we will be doing? We will be restricting the length uh, on the right hand side. Now from the step two. Uh, we have converted our uh, our grammar into the G1 and uh, in G1 all the productions uh, the, which are in the P1 will be of the two forms either variable to a terminal or variable to a set of variables so set of two or more variables okay so the only these two kind of formats will be there in G1 okay so now we define another grammar G2 uh, where the set of variables is Vn2, sigma, P2 and S. Again, this set of variables and set of productions will change. Now, how these set of variables and set of productions will change, we will look at. So, all the variables of Vn1 means G, uh, from the G1, whatsoever variables were there, all those variables are included in Vn2 as well. Okay. So, Vn2 will consist of all the variables of Vn1. Then, all the productions of P1 are included in, in the P2 if they are in the required format that is A to small and A to BC. So as all the productions in P1 were of the form either variable to a terminal so all those will also be included in P2 and all the productions of the form variable to a set of variables where the length on the right hand side is 2 will be included in P2. So the only remaining productions in of P1 uh, which are not in the required form are those from a variable to a set of variables where the length on the right hand side is more than 2. Okay. So now what we have to do, we have to restrict the number of variables on the right hand side to 2. So we will uh, restrict the number of variables on the right hand side. So up till now in the step 3, uh, we have initialized Vn2 and P2 by including all the variables of Vn1 into Vn2 and all the productions of P1 which were in the required format to the P2. So the only remaining uh, productions of P1 which are of this particular format are left. So variable to a set of variables where the length on the right hand side is 3 or more. Okay. So consider all such productions of the form, so I am taking this form A2, A1, A2, A3 and so on up till AM where M is greater than or equal to 3. Means on the uh, on the left hand, on the right hand side we are having only the variables and the length on the right hand side is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, that is more than 2 because if it would have, uh, length would have been 2, they have already been included into the P2. Okay, so uh, we will remove these kind of productions and in place of these productions, we will be introducing new productions which we will include in this P2. Okay. So what will be the form of these productions? Form of these productions will be A2, A1, C1. Here we were to use A2, A1, A2, A3 and so on. So here we have taken this A1 and this whole we are replacing by C1. So that's why we have included A2, A1, C1. Now C1 represent this. Okay. So now C1 represents A2, A3 and so on up till AM. So that's why C1 we will replace by A2, C2. So this first one will take A2 and then this remaining portion 
will become C2. This remaining portion will become C2. Now similarly, C2 will be A3, A4, and so on up till AM. So that's why C2 is A3, and then remaining portion we have replaced by C3. So what we are doing on the right hand side, we are restricting the length of variables to the two. Okay. We will keep on doing like this until we reach to the last two symbols. Okay. That's why C M minus three will be equal to A M minus two, C M minus two, because we, if it is C one, then it is A two. It is C two, then it is A three. Always more than one. So if it is C M minus three, it will be A M minus two, and here we will write C M minus two, because if it if it is C uh, it is three, it is also three. It is two, it is also two. So if it is M minus two, then it is M minus two, and then C M minus two will be the last two symbols. That is the A M minus one and A M. Okay. So in, we will keep on doing this, and we will introduce this set of productions into the E. So we will remove this, and we will include this set of production. As we have included these productions, so certain new variables we have introduced, like C one, C two, C three, and so on, up till C M minus two. So we will include these new variables C1, C2, and so on up to C M minus 2 to the set V and two. Okay. So in this manner, now 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 every production in this grammar G2 will be either of the form variable to a terminal or variable to a set of two variables. So which was the required form by the CNN. So this is the whole procedure by which we can convert. Our original, uh, our given CFG into the CNF. So I am again repeating these steps. There are three steps. Number one, we have to remove all the null productions and unit productions. The, once we have removed null and unit productions, then we will eliminate the uh, terminals from the right hand side of the productions uh, where the length is more uh, more than two. Okay. So uh, and after doing the second step, then we will. Uh, restrict the number of variables on the right hand side to the two only. So we will perform these three steps and we will convert our CFG into the CNF. Now to understand the process of conversion to CNF, we have just explained. Uh, we have taken one example uh, where the grammar productions of the grammar are given as S2 small a capital B small b capital A or S2 capital A small a. Or S2 null, A2 small a, or A2 small a capital A, and B2 small b capital B, like this. Okay, so this is a set of production I have written. So there are three variables present S, A, and B in the original grammar, and this is the set of production. Sigma uh, consists of only two uh, terminals, small a and small b. Okay, and S is the start symbol. Okay. So uh, now I will be converting this CFG into the CNF. Okay. Uh, our first step is removal of unit and null null productions and unit production. So here we I am looking at null production here, but I need not to do anything for the, for this null production because this null production is from the start symbol S. So this is just including the null into the grammar and S is not appearing on the right hand side of any production. So there is no problem with it. Okay. So I have deliberately taken an example where I need no there is no unit production present. So I have deliberately taken an example where I need not to remove the null and unit productions. But in your CFGs, if there are present the, there are null or unit productions present, you have to first perform the first step removal of null production and then removal of unit productions. So I am directly coming to the step two. In the step two, what I have to do, I have to eliminate the terminals on the right hand side. Okay, so if I look at capital A to small a, this terminal I don't have to remove because this is already in the required form of the CNF. So this I will take as it is. But wherever there is not a single terminal on the right hand side with terminals, some variables are also present. So I will in such cases I will be removing the terminals. Okay. So first of all, I am uh, including the productions into the new production set. This is uh, a. This is a to small a. So this one I have included, and rest all and and similarly, s two null this I will include. Okay. So rest I will be processing because they are not in the required format. So let us take these one by one. Suppose I am taking it first for b. Okay. 
So B to small b capital B. So B is here. So I will be replacing it by a variable. Okay. So I will be writing here B to I say C B. So this is the variable, and then capital B, and then I will be introducing C B to small b. And now you look at these two productions B to C B B and C B to B. Both are in the format of C N F. So I will be removing this and I will be adding these two. Okay. So this I have already added. This I have already added, and this I have removed. And in place of this, I have added these two. Okay. Now I will be considering a to small a capital A. This one. Okay. So this a. So I I I will replace this a small a by a new variable, say C A. Okay. So I will be introducing here a to C A A. So small a a in place of this I have introduced C A A and then C A to small. So I have removed this a to small a capital A and I have introduced this a to C A A and C A to A. So the, this is okay. Now come on S to capital A small a. Okay. So now I am having here the terminal a. For this terminal, I have already introduced a variable C A. So I can use the same variable here. Okay. So S to A C A I will be using, and C A is deriving small a. So I will be uh, able to achieve this capital A small a from the S. Now come on the. So I have removed this one, and I have added this. Now for this, there are two terminals present A and B, and for both the terminals. We have already have two variables introduced C B and C A respectively. Okay, so I will be introducing S two C A and then capital B. Then for the for for the small B, I will be introducing C B and then I will be using A. So I have removed this one and I have included this one. Okay, so this is. The new set of production, which I am calling it as P1. So after the step two, uh, you can look that I have removed the terminals from the right hand side of every production, where the uh, where, 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 where with the terminals some more so some variables were also present. Okay, so this is my uh, execution of my step two. Now from this step two, uh, I will be finding the final CNF. From the step three, by restricting the length of the variables on the right hand side. Okay, so let us come. So I will be finding P two. In P two, I will be including all the productions of P one, which are already in the required format. So S two null, it is in the required format because it is deriving only the null and S is not appearing on the right hand side of any productions. Okay, then A two. Small a, this is allowed, and then B to C B capital B. So there are two variables on the right hand side. Okay, so this is as per the uh, C N F format, it is okay. I will be, I will be including it B to C B capital B, and then C B to small b, C B to small b. This is already in the required format. Then A to C A capital A. This is also on the right hand side. There are two variables. So A to C A capital A and then C A to small a. This is also the in the required format and then S to capital A C A two variables on the right hand side. So S to capital A C A. So this is also okay. But when we come to this here on the right hand side there are four variables. So in this we need to restrict the length. Okay. So how will be restricting the length? Uh, I will be removing this, and in place of this, I will be adding some new uh, productions. So S two, I will include C A, and for this, I will introduce a new variable, say C one. Okay, so C A, C one. Now C one is a new variable, so from the C one, I will derive B C A B, and for this, I will be introducing a new variable, say C two. Okay. So it is B C two and where C two is equal to C B A. So these are last two symbols. So C two is equal to 
CB and A. So I have removed this and I have included all these productions. So now you look at this set of production, all the productions are in the required format, either variable to a terminal. So these all got the variable to a terminal and uh, all other are variable to the set of two variables. So variable to the two variables, 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 variable to the two variables and variable to the two variables. All this. Okay. So I have successfully converted my given grammar into the CNF. So if I have to write the grammar, so I will write this grammar G2 as uh, uh, set of variables here are S, A, B. So these were also present in the original grammar and some new variables I have introduced. So it is C, B, C, A. These two I have introduced. So C, A, C, B, these two I have introduced and then some more. C1 and C2, C1 and C2. So all so CA, CB, C1 and C2, these are newly introduced variables. C A and C B are introduced in the step two, and C1, C2, these were introduced in the step three. So these were the variables, and uh, set of terminals will be the same. So A and B were the terminals. So sigma will not change. Uh, set of production is P2. So this is given by this the set of production, and its start symbol is S. So this is my grammar G2. So in this manner, I have converted my given grammar into the CNF. So this is the formal method of converting a given CFG into the CNF. Thank you all.